So let's continue our discussion on SN2 reactions. In this lecture we're going to focus on leaving groups. So let's examine the following simple statement. The better the leaving group is in detaching from the atom, the more likely an SN2 reaction will take place. So that makes sense because the entire premise of an SN2 reaction is that one molecule or atom comes in makes a bond and the other atom or molecule leaves so breaks a bond so in our reaction here we have the nucleophile coming in from this side taking this H forming a bond between the NU and the H and breaking this bond between our leaving group and the H so one bond forms one bond breaks and we have the following two products now this reaction of course also occurs in reverse, in the opposite direction. In the opposite direction, this acts as a nucleophile, uh, creating a bond, breaking this bond, and this is our leaving group when we go in reverse. Now, there are two different ways that we can look at the likelihood of our SN2 reaction taking place. The first is the following. We can look at the stability of our products. How stable are our products when they're formed? In other words, if our products are very stable, that means equilibrium will lie towards the product side. Now, on the other hand, if these are very stable, more stable than these, that means equilibrium will lie to this side, to the reactant side. So, the more stable our products, meaning this anion leaving group, the more likely an SN2 reaction will take place. So, let's look at the second way. Now we can talk about acid, acids and bases. So, uh, bases and their conjugate acids. Now, we can look at this leaving group as it is a base, right? So, this is a base and it's a leaving group as well. So if this is a very weak base, that means its conjugate acid is a strong acid. So the weaker this base is, the stronger the conjugate acid is. So the stronger this conjugate acid is, the more likely it is to dissociate. Likewise, if this is a very strong base, the stronger this base, the weaker this acid. If this acid is weak, it's not very likely that it will dissociate. So the weaker the anion base, the weaker this base produced, the stronger this HL acid is. Therefore, the weaker the leaving group is as a base, the more likely our acid will dissociate. So, whenever we talk about, or whenever you want to know if our leaving group is a good leaving group, we have to look at its basicity. If it's a weak base, that means it will be a good leaving group because the conjugate acid will be a good acid. And we can actually quantify by looking at the pKa values. The pKa of the conjugate acid of the leaving group can tell us if the leaving group is a good leaving group or a poor leaving group. So, if this is a poor acid or this is a poor base, that means this will be a good acid. It will have a relatively low pKa value, and that means it will readily dissociate. But if the pKa value is relatively high, that means it's a weak acid, a strong base, and so this leaving group will not dissociate. It's not very likely that it will dissociate. So let's look at our halogen group. So as we go from iodine or iodide to fluoride, our basicity increases. That means as we go up, this becomes more basic. So that means as we go down, our acidity of the conjugate acids of these bases increases. So HF, for example, is not very likely to dissociate because our F is a very good base. So HF will tend to stay as HF because it's a weak acid. Likewise, HI is a very good acid because this is a very poor base. And so this becomes a very good leaving group. So once again, as we go up the group, the basicity increases as we go up this group. This means that the stronger the base, the weaker its conjugate acid, and the less likely our leaving group will dissociate. So we can equate 
strong bases with poor leaving groups and weak bases with good leaving groups because the stronger our base, the weaker our acid. And the weaker the base, the stronger our acid and the better our leaving group is. Now suppose we have a very poor leaving group. Can we convert a poor leaving group to a good leaving group? So let's look at the following example. Let's suppose we have a nucleophile that reacts with an alcohol molecule. So if this undergoes an SM2 reaction, this nucleophile will form a bond with this R, kicking off this uh, leaving group OH, hydroxide. So we form the following two products. Does this reaction actually take place? No, it doesn't. Why? It doesn't take place because this is a very poor leaving group. How do we know? Well, if we examine the, this uh, base, if we ask ourselves, is this a strong base? We'll see that, yes, it is a strong base. And that means the conjugate acid of our strong base must be a poor leaving group. If this is a poor leaving group, that means that this is not very likely to dissociate, so this reaction will not take place via an SN2 fashion. But if we convert this somehow to a good leaving group, then it can undergo an SN2 reaction. So let's take our alcohol and let's place an H ion next to that alcohol. What will happen is this lone pair of electrons will pick up this H atom and will form the following molecule. Now look at what happens. Now this is a much better acid than this. So this was a strong base, this was a poor acid, so a poor leaving group. Now we have a good leaving group because it's a good conjugate acid of this base. When these two react, this forms a bond with the R, kicks off this, we form water. And water, as we know, is a weak base. And that means its conjugate acid is a strong acid, so this is a good leaving group. And so we see that if we have a situation in which we have a poor leaving group, we can always, or most of the time, change that poor leaving group to a good leaving group by simply changing the acidity of that acid. In this case, we took the poor acid and made it into a better acid. Or, said another way, we took a strong base and made it into a weak base.